Welcome to today's EMN5. We're going to talk about multiple myeloma. Let's start off with a case. We have an 84-year-old female, history of hypertension, bad back, and dementia. She has ANO times 1. She's brought in by her daughter who says that over the past couple of months, she's been complaining of some back pain and has just been gradually having more and more weakness and now the past couple of weeks has not even been able to get out of bed. You run some basic screening labs and this is what comes back. She has a hemoglobin of 9 platelets of 87. Her creatinine is 2.3, up from normal about one year ago. Serum creatinine is a little high at 11.2. And you do get some x-rays of the T and L spine based on her history of pain in that area and with movement, which shows multiple vertebral compression fractures. So any of these results you could probably explain by a variety of different things on your differential if taken one by one, but you kind of put them all together and this patient has what's concerning for multiple myeloma. So let's review what multiple myeloma is. It's a malignant proliferation of plasma cells, which are white cells, that are in charge of antibody production. And this results in an overproduction of these antibodies, or the monoclonal immunoglobulins, or M proteins. And a lot of the signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma are caused by plasma cells that infiltrate into the bone, the organs, or cause regional damage from excess of light chain proteins. So who gets multiple myeloma? It makes up about 1% of malignancies. The median age is 66 years old and is slightly more common in males than females, although it's pretty close at 1.4 to 1. A few common features, the peripheral smear, about 50% of patients you'll see this Rouleau formation, which is an appearance of stacking of the red cells, um, and that occurs when there's a high concentration of serum proteins. You also see leukopenia and thrombocytopenia in many patients. And the bone marrow is where you actually see the proliferation of the plasma cells in high concentrations. So let's talk about a lot of the signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma. Bone pain is one of the most common and is many times the reason that patients who have known multiple myeloma will come to the ER. This is because the plasma cells infiltrate into the bone marrow and can cause lytic lesions and fractures, which many times occur in the back, the ribs, the extremities, and these are many of the common locations as we talked about. Now, many patients that have had the diagnosis will have had a skeletal survey, which includes the following. And if you have access to the records, that might be helpful to look and see if the pain that they're having is from a known lesion or fracture. 80% of patients at the time of diagnosis of multiple myeloma will have a fracture or some kind of lesion, and it's very common, unfortunately. So the punched-out lesions, that's your classic board-type question. Here you have some examples you can see in the radius during the screening x-rays, and also over here you can see it in the humerus, these punched-out lesions. It's also very classic to have it in the skull, which is why that's part of the skeletal survey. So you can see um, both these examples have these punched out lytic lesions in the skull. And also here's an example in the femur. The patients also generally have osteopenia and then can have pathologic fractures surrounding these lesions. These can typically occur on the axial skeleton and also in the ribs, sometimes the extremities and the pelvis as well. And here's an example of a humerus pathologic fracture. Here's two examples in the yellow of vertebral compression fractures. This also has an example of a lytic lesion that ended up having a soft tissue mass. Okay, next we have renal disease. This can range quite a bit. About 50% of patients have some kind of renal disease. It can range from an elevated creatinine all the way up to end-stage renal disease. And that's caused a lot of times from light chain nephropathy, but can also be exacerbated by the hypercalcemia that's a part of the disease. And the result of this is proteinuria, which you can screen as a part of the multi multiple myeloma diagnosis. Next we have anemia. 73% of patients have anemia. It's very common. And this again is from plasma cells that infiltrate the bone marrow. And it's not helped by the fact that you have this renal damage as well. In the ER, we really have to look out for some of the neuro symptoms because these can be the most dangerous. A lot of times patients can have a thoracic or lumbosacral radiculopathy. These can be caused by a couple different things. Cord compression is the big scary one and that's what we're looking out for in the ER. This can be caused from either a vertebral fracture or collapse or an extramedullary plasmacytoma, which is compressing the cord. You can also have peripheral neuropathy, which is caused by amyloidosis, or very uncommonly, you can have um, CNS findings from an intracranial plasmacytoma. So if you have any of these red flag symptoms of cord compression in the ER, you need to get an MRI of the entire spine. So be on the lookout. Patients with multiple myeloma have a high incidence of this. So make sure and ask them about any urinary retention. You can even measure a bladder scan in the ER. Ask about constipation or incontinence. And then some of the later symptoms is uh, sensory impairment such as numbness or tingling 
or even motor weakness or paralysis. And here's an example of a lesion. You can see it's compressing on the spinal cord. And here's another example of that plasma cytoma that's having some compression. Okay, so we've covered neuro. Um, let's talk about infection next. Now, patients are generally at higher risk of infection because of the impaired normal plasma cell function. However, they can be especially at risk for pneumonias because of hypoventilation. If, you can imagine if they have rib or spinal fractures, they're splinting, not taking good breaths, and are at increased risk for having pneumonias. And last, we have hypercalcemia. This can be seen in about 30% of patients. It can be caused from bone breakdown, and also make sure and check an ionized calcium. Signs and symptoms of this are nausea, vomiting, constipation, weakness, and altered mental status. So let's talk about our three to remember for multiple myeloma. First of all, just the definition, it's a plasma cell proliferation. It causes bony destruction of the axial skeleton and also renal failure. Those are the main two things you're going to be seeing in the ER, probably along with anemia. In the ER, the emergency that you need to be looking out for is cord compression. This can be caused from vertebral fractures, lytic lesions, or plasmocytomas that are compressing the cord. If you have any of those red flag symptoms, make sure you MRI the entire spine. And just a review of the kind of board type questions for multiple myeloma, you see the rouleau formations on the peripheral smear, and then you see these punched out lesions, lytic lesions on the skeletal survey. Here are the resources, and thanks for, again for joining us on EM in 5.